the third of March, so I'll come out and do a bit of video in today because I've got a few jobs I could do with getting on. As on the rare occasion the sun is out and it's not raining, which is a very, uh, I'm very grateful for that today because I need to get on. Um, so I'm just going to take this fleece because we've had a bit, a little bit of frost and stuff, so I've uh, been covering my sea potatoes up because actually finally managed to get them out and start them chitting. So uh, there's all varieties under here. Um, little chits have started on them. If you're unsure what chits are, they look like this. These are a bit pale because I said I've had a few days in here, but they'll green up and toughen up. So when you get your potato, you see potato, you know, you look for these little eyes on top. You know, you might see some at the start, but usually on, they have a bit of a sort of one end, they have like, it's where they came off the root. It's where the actual original plant had the root to go into that end, and it's always usually the other end. You know, with main croppers, you can pick some off later on, or just leave them, but you don't have to chip. First deal is, you know, um, they're always good to chip because it just gives you a bit of a head start. But you could sort of like just bung them in the ground and they'll find their own really. That's all farmers do. So I'm just going to uh, take this fleece off. Um, some of these, um, well most of these are my own that I grew last year. Some leftovers. I mean I've got some uh, tray here with a lot of jazzies. Small. Um, I thought I might as well chip plenty of them because I can always pop them in tubs, you know. So it's just uh, making sure they're all all right. These are, um, I think they are Charlotte's, and then I've got some Duke of Yorks down there, some of them Maris Piers. These are all, all I had to buy some all in because um, there's a few that are me on. I mean, I've got some me on in this tray back here, but um, all a great crop. Uh, I tend to use them mostly because they're a good all rounder. So, yeah, these are all out. There's need somewhere, uh, there's have to be really really bright just need some sort of light uh frost free so like i say if it's you put them in your greenhouse and that i guess you know but uh, just be careful about any frost cover them over or just a, a cool room near a near a window will do fine and you're aiming for uh short little sprouts little chits on them that are nice and green so uh, yeah plenty to do today uh i've got a do some uh, pricking out of the brassicas, the seedlings, and that I had a few problems with the seeds, to be honest. So we'll have a look at them in a minute. But yeah, I need to clear out the polys a little bit and start making some room. And then they obviously start pricking the, the brassicas out. Maybe some lettuce and sow tomatoes. I need to get them done. So I'm hoping to get all that done today. Um, but obviously, it depends how long it's going to take to clear the polys on out. So because I, I went in there before and I thought I can't I can't move in here. So it's come to that point. I need to clear some because I've got some lettuce in there. I'm going to clear that out and um, make a bit of room so I can put some stuff underneath the shelf for now and as I say that there's, there's a cloud gone over some but I think we'll be okay for today hopefully anyway because if it starts chucking it down that kind of brings an end to the day um, to a degree so uh, I'll get the camera and we'll have a look at poly tool so as you, as you can see I need to have a right good clear out I need to sort of sort these back I can't really put these bags outside because um, I could probably put some in the shed just to it's just I don't want them getting covered with rain or you know because they do sometimes, there's little holes in bags and they puddle up and I'm trying to dry because I mean a lot of this is, you know, that's my own compost and if it gets wet it can get quite sticky. Um, so I just need to clear some room. Um, I'll probably, I've got these old strawberry plants I'm hoping. Take all these dead foliage off these, these are alpine strawberries. Take all the dead foliage off and then uh, I'll put them down in the little greenhouse down the bottom. But uh, I've not looked at this garlic for a couple of weeks so in here I've got my pots of garlic. See if I can pull the pot out, see if there's any, any business going on underneath them. Pick that one in the middle. So yeah, garlic's got roots on it. Anything going on top, just starting to see. I don't know how you can see that, but that's the tip of the garlic. You know, um, planted these a bit ago, to be honest now. Um, but yeah, usually from, you know, four to six weeks, you'll see nothing happening on top, but that's a telltale sign that something's going on. So what I'd probably do with these now is I'll probably put them on some sort of rack so the air can get to those roots and dry them off. So that just keeps the roots contained in the pot. Otherwise they end up like, you know, spaghetti hanging out the bottom, which makes them hard to get out. So they can go up to the plot in about a month. Well, it'll be probably, it'll just be over a month because it's, it's going to be so wet down there. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping like in about six weeks time to plant the whole plot up, but uh, need some serious um, lack of rain at the moment to try and uh, help the ground dry out because it's, it is sodden. I mean, it's like Kane's paddock is just it's soaking down that bottom end. I can't even get him out, it's too wet. You know, and up here, this is just run off and it puddles everywhere. It doesn't usually flood so bad in garden, but obviously places like that, it just makes a mess. 
and it, it doesn't make it a joy to do anything but uh, we have to get on with what we can so uh, these are sweet peas um, a little bit leggy because you know um, we're on windowsill now so these all these came out yesterday um, so they'll they'll sort of slow down that part now and just start to firm up so you can just rub your hands across them gently like that and that kind of mimics like a bit of a breeze and that will just stick signal them to sort of you know toughen up you do same with like you, you know your your seedlings and stuff some but you know some people have like a fan going but just be careful because you can you know obviously it pulls the moisture off so um obviously some patchy germination um I suppose I think this was a Lola Rossa. I have I have sown like a backup tray just in case. I always do because I hate it when you get like a failed area. So I always have a backup. Usually tend to start a backup about a week, two weeks after. Uh, these are Mazur, little gems, um, Grenoble Red. These are new Red Fire. This is Artemis Rocket. And this is a Wild Rocket. Now the Wild Rocket always tends to take a little bit longer anyway, but they are a couple of years old. That pack of seed. Um, completely, I had some Prime O2 here, which was some uh, seeds from DT Browns, they were probably about um, two years older seeds. Should, they're still viable, they're still in date, but nothing's come. The Swede's gone a bit, so I might just re-sow some of that and just leave it outside. If it's warm enough outside to germinate, you end up with very little stem, you know, and they end up nice and nestled to the ground. Then we've got here, that's Rigoletto, that's the uh, broccoli, the quills. Um, that is the Dora the spring greens, and that's the cauliflower. So I'm hoping to prick all these out, or the bulk of them, into these little tiny pots, which are well, probably about 50 centimetre pots. They're only tiny things, but hopefully they'll stay in these until I can plant them out. You know, so in total, I mean, these are about, what well, I planted these on 20, it's 22nd I sold these, so they're just over a week old. So by the time they go up to plot, they'll, they'll have had probably like, what seven eight weeks growth so they don't actually need that long in the ground you know because i mean i'll be eating these broccoli i'll be harvesting them uh june i'll be harvesting them end of may start of june be eating them you know so it's, it'll soon be here right we'll have a look at these onions as you can see quite varied results now i'm not one for calling seed companies I, I wouldn't i wouldn't really do that but it's not brilliant you know i mean i've got uh, I know which who's are who's, but um, I've got um, Red Spark, Santero, and another Santero. You know, and basically, I mean, these, these are off DT Browns. They're still in date, the seeds, until 2025. But that is like very poor germination. And these are off a company called Seed Megastore. You know, still gaps. You know, but I'd say that's, if you can get sort of, 60 and above percent germination that's great but i mean in that one full tray red spark 48 one you know uh, i mean that, how do you calculate the percentage on that you know it's not <laughs> it's not um it's not great i mean there's a few more on these so um i've had to I've, i'm chitting some more seeds off um which have started sprouting which are from these so but i mean yeah come on seed companies you know you shouldn't be uh putting out old seed you know when you buy some seed you expect some date on it you know they've all been stored the same they've all been sown the same way the same day you know it just goes to show sometimes that it isn't your fault and things like this happen and if people are newcomers to gardening this could make them give up they think like i can't do it and give up and it's not their fault so um yeah it's, it's something that needs sorting out really because to be honest it's not like seeds are cheap either you know, I mean, it's like a pack of seeds there, uh, might be three quid. You know, but from that, you get like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine onions. You know, probably, you know, probably cost you nearly three quid to buy nine onions. So it's not feasible, it's not worthwhile doing with the compost and trays and that when, you, when you're getting that sort of situation happen. If you could at least get 50%, then fine. But things like this shouldn't be happening. I know there's issues with like Zebrun, shallots. For a long time, people struggling to get them to germinate, and you just wonder why. You know, because when you get like you know the same, it is worth doing. I think if you if you get the same type of seed off two or three companies, whoever they are, because there's hundreds of seed companies, 
you know, don't always necessarily go for the main ones, go for the little small ones. Because, you know, like, like someone mentioned in the comment, Premier Seeds, I used them years ago and they were like 99p a pack just because they weren't in a fancy pictorial packet. But they were been good seeds, you know, cheap and you get good germination. You know, so it is worth getting a couple and then that will give you some confidence. Otherwise, if you start losing confidence in your seed supplier, you, you're always in doubt. And I'm at that point now. Because um, I think I've used DT Browns for years. You know, where, you know, I mean, I mean obviously, you know, things like this, Monsieur, great germination. You know, some of the brassicas like the Clapton, you know, and then the Aquils, good germination. You know, but it seems to be, you know, the whole Allium thing with them onions. And they're F1s, these as well, which make them even slightly dearer. But on the other hand, I got the Ishikura spring onion seeds off them. Good germination. You know, the Primo 2 ended up using an pack that I got off a seed magazine. That, uh, these are actually on the last year of date, but yeah, got good germination. So yeah, it needs it needs, it needs addressing this, you know, uh, it's not on. But so nevertheless, we shall crack on. Uh, but like I say, you get this happen. And if you don't have a backup plan, you know, or some a second sort of batch that you you know that you think I need to sort of get them ready just in case they fail, you lose time in the season. You know, and every week is quite valuable. You know, at the moment you can't do anything much outside, but you need to get this this sort of time there. You can steal a few weeks, but things like this just set you back. You know, and you end up thinking, you know, I mean, like the red spark. You know, they're not mildew resistant. That means by the time these are growing it's mildew hits you know and you're thinking if they'd have germinated straight away it wouldn't set you back that week or two or, or even a month you know because some people wait weeks and weeks and they're thinking it's not coming up you know I'd, I'd say with most seeds if you've not seen any sign within sort of 10 to 14 days resow. they might i've had them before now with like leaks and stuff where they've taken like three weeks to come up you know um, and it's like some things like peppers take a bit longer but um, don't sit there and, and stare at a, an empty tray and don't be tempted to think, oh, I need to water it and water it because you'll probably rot the seeds off. But, um, which I haven't done in this case because obviously they've all been done exactly the same way, all done the same, same time. They've all been sort of put in the same windowsill to germinate and it's just a comparison. It's, it's quite easy to see there, you know. Pretty good. Not great. You know, absolutely terrible. You know, even though these two are different varieties, but they're still the seeds are still valid till 2025, and we're only at the start of 2024. Yeah, so it's not on. Right, enough of that. We shall get on. That'll do for now. Go and have a cup of tea, I think, and then uh, sort some out this other side. I thought I'd plant some spuds. I wasn't actually intending to, but I've, I've remembered I've got some swift knocking around. They're, they're not ideally chitted. They're a bit pale because they've been in the shade a bit. Um, but uh, they've got some little sprouts. They're a bit soft because of what I obviously last year. So if they come to anything, great. If they don't, it's no big loss. I might as well bung them in uh, and see what happens. I've got some spent compost. I've just all I've done. I put about. Uh, about 20 litres of my own that I put through a sieve the other week and I'm just going to put some blood fish and bone meal. I just found a bit of blood fish and bone meal in the shed so I'm just going to add that to it and uh, just two tubs to do uh, four potatoes in each and just see if it comes to anything. But it's uh, pretty easy, I mean there's plenty of videos on this on YouTube, just sort of fill it up, you know, it's about a third of the way in each one. It's quite damp this compost so I'm not going to water it. You don't really need, I don't find they need much water until, uh, you know, you sort of like see the, uh, the actual shoots coming through the top. Because by then they've actually put some roots out, otherwise you've just got a little potato down there that's slowly rotting. So that's, you know, third, just under half, third of the way up. A couple 
it out to the fishing ball merely. Just sort of uh, mix that all into the bottom bit. I mean, if you've got holes in the bottom of your tub, quite a few holes, you can block it up with a, you know, a thin layer of straw or something like that if you want to stop the compost from running through. I just find it's, it's unless you can get your compost cheap, it's, it's very dear to grow your own in tubs now. So I'll just get two potatoes, I'm going to use these handles as a marker to start off with, I'm just going to nestle them down so they end up about a third of the way down. That's up. Get it out of the way. I'm trying to find a dry island to actually do some work on. Carefully so you don't snap any of the uh, shoots off because when they are pale, the shoots they do break off. You know, obviously, this will sink, so don't be frightened of filling it right to the top. I'm not sure what was grown in this compost last year, probably potatoes. It's just some adding a wheelie bin, so very loam based, so. Quite a lot of soil in it, which I find, you know, where uh, potatoes actually quite like small base. I'll fill them as close to the top as I can. You can always top them up if you need to. But before I uh, go any further, I'm going to make two holes, but do just even that out a bit. Yes, potato in there already. Alright, so I put the other two there, so I'm just gonna make two sort of rough holes there. Just so they go about a third of the way down from the top roughly. Same again. Shove that right down in there. Cover them over. So on this side. The idea is we're doing them like laid like this is uh, the root it kind of uses the whole pot otherwise you just end up with potatoes at the lower half and nothing at the top so you're trying to maximize how much compost you're going to use for a crop of potatoes and usually with first earlies pound to two pounds per seed potato is good Probably harvest them in about 10 12 weeks. Weather permitting, obviously, you know, if you get some nice warm days, speed things up. Probably start coming through the top in about three to five weeks. We'll just protect from frost. So there's a frost pending and you've got any top showing, cover them over either with a fleece or a big pile of straw on top. I'm going to put some straw on top of these anyway, just to limit the weed seeds. Obviously, keeps it warm, insulates it, and obviously prevents it from drying out. Just some chopped straw. This put a layer on top. Don't worry, your potatoes will poke through that. You can feed them with a bit of tomato feed. So sort of last sort of three or four weeks of growth but you don't really need it so much first early as I found especially when you're doing like this because it's uh, it's just a little bit of an early bonus crop couldn't be simpler really I'm just going to shove them into the polytunnel and for now I'll probably use them just to put some timber across just to make a sort of shelf you know for three or four weeks and just keep it out see I see some tops lifting up I'll get them into it full light then in the, in the polytunnel still, they won't actually come outside until frost dates pass, which is May for me. So I'll have them in the polytunnel and we'll uh, crack them clearing up in there. Just another job out of the way. 
Right, that was a good uh, three quarters of an hour well spent. Got quite a bit done, so it's it looks a bit more functional in here now. Um, obviously, a bit clear on the shelf here. Basically, got two th empty 30 litre tubs, put them there, some timber across, and a little bit of like mesh shelfing stuff. Put the garlic on there, cover that over with bubble wrap, put some bits of tools, you know, like tra trowels and things, things you need to get out early season, and move them up there for jackdaw food, then just throw a few out from well amount here. Um, so it frees up this shelf completely now because it's as soon as you start pricking things out obviously it's going to expand massively so i'll probably put my brassicas over that side and keep this free ready for things like you know lettuce and everything else um, probably near as far to the back of the polytunnel as possible because obviously this time of year the sun gets the back of the polytunnel more than anything um obviously get some morning and evening light where you know mainly sort of like as soon as the sun dips down below the rooftops it kind of uh, doesn't get to the front up until probably end of month and the polytunnel is pretty much in sunshine all day long which is what we want really so uh, we're going to make some compost up and I'll probably sell some tomatoes and then uh, load a load of pots up and um, get on with uh, pricking uh, some of these out and that sort of end to the day sort of a bit casual pottering in the sunshine because it is pretty warm in here but it must be 20 plus in here at least so uh, cause I've, I've got an actual uh, thermometer down there and it's cooler down there it's about 15 degrees down there because that's in the shade but that sends a signal into the into the house so i can keep it i can monitor the temperature so if that gets down to something like you know um three degrees or something it's a chance of frost because i find frost usually nips about you know anywhere between three can uh, three and zero it can all of a sudden just snap and you could lose a lot so it's just it's no trouble then to keep it out so it gets down to sort of like you know five i've come out and throw a fleece over stuff so i've got some fleece that's kind of cut two foot wide just to lay over things because plants will support themselves with the fleece but uh get a reasonably thick fleece some of the um cheap pound shop stuff or really cheap thin stuff just double it up it still works fine unless if it's a really hard frost if it's going to really drop really cold take your plants indoors overnight and just put them in a the room turn the light off because if you have too much false light they'll just get leggy and uh, but once you've had a few weeks out they'll generally harden off because none of it's really frost tender as such as obviously the potatoes in the tubs are but um, they're not going to be through for a while so i'll put them there so they'll get plenty of sunshine so hopefully it'll dry some of the compost out a little bit but it'll just warm them up in the daytime in the sun which will get them through the night and it'll just trigger them to uh, start start the growing process and hopefully we'll get a bit of a crop right let's get on with some more more jobs mix some uh, compost up so i'll probably use a uh, a bit of my own, a bit of boat stuff and uh, some vermiculite. I'm just going to rummage it out now, it's a little bit more, more to hand. This is the, uh, the boat stuff, it's just this uh, Levington's multi-purpose peat rig. You know, it's, it's a bit more fibrous stuff in it. It's going to be pretty much the same mix I'm going to use for potting things on as well. I'll just mix a little bit for now just for doing the tomatoes. I'll probably just, you know, time lapse a lot of this so I'll just do a couple of snippets and cut and edit otherwise it's going to end up like an hour long I mean this time it's sometimes it's nice to watch long videos but uh, I find that a lot of people tend to just watch the first 10-15 minutes and then uh, switch off and then they'll ask questions and I've already answered them in the video you know so that's the thing so you end up you know Answering comments that I've not mentioned in videos is, is I don't mind that at all, but if I've already answered it in the video, it's like, well, watch the video. I do video everything. Sometimes, you know, you give tips out that are helpful, just in conversation. You know, just me talking to the camera. Sometimes I'm not conscious of, of the fact that I've actually, you know, given out information as well. And anything you can take from it, great. So I've got my own compost here. Spread it out a bit, a bit, a bit more uh, for Mickey Light, I think. I thought my tomato seeds are alright, I've not bought any tomato seeds this year, apart from sun gold. I did try over winter with some uh, sun golds on the windowsill, but I just started dying on myself. Or, you know, just taking suckers and that. 
putting them on. I'm going to start down, so I thought I'll just be done with it. And uh, get a pack of seeds, because some golds are nice, and these are like the first to go. So I'm not sure how many trays I'm going to need, so I'm just going to, I can fit five in one of these. Same thing, just sort of scoop it off so it's flat like that. Another one. Lightly press it down. That's it, a water in my watering can. Just in, probably enough to just wet these up a bit because you don't need soaking because this compost is dampish anyway. I mean, usually I would take this compost in for a bit, but the sun's been on it, so it's, uh, it's actually not cold to touch. World's slowest watering can. Looks like I've put loads on there, but it's probably only about 150 mil of water gone and all that. You know, I'll be able to tell off the weight. It's not dead heavy, so it's not too wet. When you lift it up and it's dead heavy, the best thing I'd suggest there is probably leave it with a lid off somewhere in, you know, in the sunshine, sort of, sort of thing to, to dry off for a few days because you, you can sort of like accidentally fill it, but you can draw draw some water out of it if you've got like wicky mats or put them on a towel or kitchen roll. You can drain some of the water off. Right, so uh, I'm going to turn the camera off because I've not even got my seeds out here, labels or anything. And I, I want to try and get prepared because I don't want to mess this bit up and go uh, what tomatoes what, which does happen. Right, uh, right, go and get me bits and bobs then. Don't, I probably won't use all these today, I mean, you know, because the other things I'll probably so, you know, because I've got something like, you know, um, some more chilies to sow, I think. But I do give quite a few tomato plants away. Oh, yeah, I've got a few there. So I'll probably do half and half like that. So I'm just going to scatter these over the top. Sort of thinly, because I actually only usually grow about three of each variety full term. One. That's what's the uh, gardener's delight. And I'll couple that with probably my own tigerella. All you do is just get a really overripe tomato, cut it in half, and uh, take the pulp out with the seeds, and just put it in a jar of water and keep changing the water every couple of days, stirring it, and that thins the pulp out, and then drain them off, wash them on a sieve, and then pop them on a kitchen roll, let them dry out, and then you're good to go. Tomato seeds will, will germinate perfectly fine if you just leave them on the top. Um, I just find that if you've got a little bit of coverage, it just helps when it comes up that it, it leaves the seed husk, so to speak, it down in there. Right, I better do some labels because if I mix these up, I'm going to be up creek without a paddle. Uh, right, let's have a look. So we've got uh, Gardener's Delight. That side. And then we've got uh, Gorilla. At this end. That's all. And uh, what have we got now? Let's have a look. Um, sun gold. Yeah, two sun gold. That's an empty pack, so. Well, I've kept that. And these are careful when you open them because they're an F1 these and you don't get loads of seeds. They're like carrot seeds, you don't want to do it on a windy day outside because they just fly off everywhere. How many seeds do you actually get anyway? Um, 15 seeds. So I'm going to go spare them these. Here they come. Well, one.
pull it close together there where them just separate them over a bit. That's uh Miles and Shirley. Just from Shirley. Are these in date still? Um so by 20 for 25, yep, so they're still in date. These are in F1 as well. I ain't got many of these either. The only thing I've got to watch, you see, is I do notice this compost, my own made compost, tends to have some tomato seeds in it, um, so they will sprout. <laughs> so I'm just hoping that uh, these ones sprout before. Otherwise, we'll have a bit of a mix and match. That's a shirley, so I'll do them. Uh, labels for them you can just do it in one big train lines you know I've, I used to do that some sometimes or just use a mushroom you don't need anything fancy for sewing use an old cup um, right so we've got some gold got that end that's Shirley County. Well, I thought that saved me all other counties from last year. They probably I'll probably find them somewhere. All separate in an envelope on their own. Look, scissors, yes. One of these. You know, these are packed 2022. These are from Simply Garden. Alicante and Shirley, I found them very similar. So Alicante's. Uh, Roma. I don't think I've got any, uh, I should have some of my own safe San Marzano somewhere. to get hold of some San Marzano seeds to be honest because uh, I thought I had some I can have a look after them if I've got some I'll, uh, I'll sew them the thing I found with these uh, like Roma is uh, they're a bit more they're like determinate so they don't get high at all I found they tend to stop about you know four foot high and that's your lot I forgot here now. Uh, so that's a plenty. Is that? Hmm. 
sparks are plenty. Yeah, that's a bit of a mystery. Never mind, I shall have a look. I'm sure I've got some sand miles on my own. Right, so uh, what else we've got? My money maker. Yeah, I've a few money maker. They're not the best, but my own money maker seeds. I, mean, I should have my own money maker seeds, to be honest. I did take some. So we've got here. Yep, there in date. I'll go with that. do is some of them shop bought ones that I took some seed from because these are a cherry well, I have no idea well, it says here I took them in uh, 2022 these don't seem that long down this end. And see what we get. Alright, so I've got to uh, Money maker. Got that end. Sugar, I think it's. I can't see what it says. Isn't it? Sugar, sugar, sugar salad. I think it is. I'll put uh, shop bought. Something to try out. I've got a four, so I'll leave it on three and I'll have a look for some San Marzano later. And uh, I'll just throw them the same way. I think that's, I might put some of them uh, Cordy Boo in as well. And then we just have to uh, cover them with a bit of compost. Find my little sieve. There it is. Nice and high. And all you're really doing is just covering the seed. Just uh, very lightly, just touch the top, just to make sure all the seeds are actually nice and flat. Because if it's not in contact with any sort of moisture, it um, it'll find its way after a little humidifying there. But uh, just to speed it up a bit, so I'm not pressing down. I'm just tampering the top down. I'll just put a propagator lid on these and pop them on the windowsill. These will get planted out in the polytunnel um, end of May, I should imagine. Um, well, middle to end of May. When I'm when I'm happy, the frost has passed. You know, unless if anything uh, anything happens where the season goes to pot, but, uh, have to cross that bridge. I'll put that one in there anyway. 
and then I'll find the lid. I've got, I've had a, I've had a shift around in here, I can't find anything. One of these lids, will it, will it fit that tray? Pretty much, so I'm going to close the lid. Obviously there's holes in the bottom, but that'll humidify. I'll leave it out here actually for while the sun's out this afternoon. Because that'll just kick them into sort of humidifying, it won't dry out in there yet. Right, it's a cup of tea time, a bit of a tidy up. Have a look, see if I can find some San Marzano seeds. And then uh, get on with some pricking out, I think. Right, I'm going to prick out my uh, brassicas now and put them into these like, little two inch pots. Um, Quite cheap, you can pick these up at supermarkets, these things, I can't remember much, they weren't dear at all. I think I got these from Wilcross to be honest, but um, this is the size of the pot, it's just, there's 40, it holds 40 in a tray I think. So um, I'm going to probably, I'll only probably do 24 collie, but I'll do 30, just to give me a, a bit of a safe, you know, a bit of a fail safe. So I've got a few to, to pick out in case there's any have problems or anything, because you only need one slug. So always check your trays this time of year. Underneath the lids, in case there's a little slug hide in there, otherwise it doesn't have to go far, it'll feast on your seedlings, and it does happen. So, uh, it could be simpler, really. So, I say it's just the same compost stuff, vermiculite. The vermiculite I've got in the, the other bag is it's quite a coarse mix, so uh, but it'll do, it'll be fine. So, I will water these to settle them in, and then I'll just water them as and when, probably bottom soak them as and when they need it. So, I've just got like a little dibber, you can use a pencil. I mean, you can use like a normal fork if you want. I mean, I've got one of these little tiny things which are handy, but I tend to just stick with these. So, uh, right, it's Clapton. So you just simply like stick your dibber in and, and sort of loosen up that compost under your seedlings, trying to get as much of the root as you possibly can. Get this one here. Grab it by the seed leaves. There's not many roots on that, to be honest, but there's some on it. You can bury them because when they actually go out, you plant these are seed leaves, they'll go beyond that. You'll, you'll plant them out actually down to the first true leaves. So, for this, I'm going to plant them uh, not all the way down, you can do, but I mean, it's the idea is to get more root growth on it. Just make a hole, dip that down, just firm it down around it. When they get planted out in the final place, all the brassica family do like a really good firming. Gotta make sure you get them well firmed into the ground. Yeah, I'm, I'm making a hole pretty much all the way to the bottom of the pot on these, really, just to allow me to make sure I can get some reasonable depth on them. I'm hoping I can get 30. But if I can get 24, I can always throw a few, few more seeds into a, you know, into one of these, or just start another tray with a, you know, a bit of a mixture, just as a backup. You know, or it doesn't matter because as long as you keep your ones that you sow a bit later, um, at one end of the bed, you can kind of create sort of successional soil. And if you if you like to sow them like every two to three weeks. You know that that will give you some sort of a sectional soil, but I tend to like all my all my brassicas ready and want it. Well, like all the cauliflowers and everything like that, so I can harvest them, get the get the bed replanted with the next batch. You know, so it's it's fairly st straightforward most of the time. I won't tell you all the time, most of the time, if you do it at this sort of stage or slightly smaller, you can do it slightly, you know, after, you know, when they've got a bit bigger, they're just easier to handle because there's less root to disturb. Um, you don't tend to lose any. They will droop a bit maybe, but, um, you know, today, but if you water them, then you'll come out the day after, you know, over the next 48 hours. It doesn't matter if they're all bent and leaning over and stuff like that, they will find the way and they'll straighten up. Unless if obviously they're not getting good light, they'll lean towards the light and get leggy, but these are going to stay out full time now, they won't go back in the house. And if it's got like a, a light rainfall one day, it's not heavy, chucking it down like a fine drizzle, instead of watering them, I'll put them out and they can be watered 
um, by the rain. As long as they don't get soaked, but I mean, this they can drain um, through these pots if need be. You know, then all, all I'll do watering wise, I'll get the world's slowest watering can and just a bit of good water. And they probably won't get watered again for about two or three weeks. And all that'll do is it'll settle all the fine sediment around the roots. And that's it. You know, it can drain out, there's drain out the bottom. So that's plenty enough water than what it needs. You can bottom soak them in something if you want to do it that way, but I just find if you water these from the top at this point, it just helps pull the compost down around the root ball, and then you're fine then. Right, I'll get on with the rest of these and we'll let, have a look how far I get today. Right, that's it for today. I've got pretty much most of the things I want to get done done. There's still a bit more pricking out to do, but the seeds aren't quite big enough yet, and obviously with some patchy germination, there's other things I'll have to prick out in a few days. So, I say, you, you saw me do the... Um, the cauliflower I've done I've done some lettuce well it's just the same really just carefully prick it out keep as much root as you can and uh, just, just prick them out to another tray um, I've just put my um, lettuce into module trays so we'll have a look around and see what I've managed to get done today so it's a lot tidier and and it's kind of looking like it's starting to begin now which is uh, nice after such a horrible winter so uh, I'll, have a look. I'll turn the camera around and we'll have a look all right we'll start at this end we've got these um see sweet peas got two trays of them I've left the vents open on them um because i don't want them to cook you know because it's just just take don't take long you know if i'm nipping out somewhere and there's also like a really hot spell of sunshine down on them they can cook off a bit these are all like the uh leftovers there's still like obviously the rocket and the lola rossa you know if it comes up um, i'll have to get some more artemis seeds i think but um there's still time for it. there's no no rush with that uh, these are blank because i'm waiting for the uh primo two um seeds which will have a look at in a minute that i'm going to do 15 of them i've got the durham earlies which are spring greens i've done uh, 25 of them i didn't have enough uh clapton cauliflower seedlings so i need to i think i've got a few more to sow because uh, i want i want 30 so i've got 23 months of obviously the, the blank row here you know but uh, the rest of all they're all in these are hopefully they'll stand up and they'll be okay uh rigoletto i've got uh Two rolls here, and another row in this one. So it's got to be careful I don't mix them up. Um, I'll know once I want to do the drinking straw thing later on in the season. Well, probably in about a month, I'll uh, I'll know then because they're all colour coded. I need to get some more straws. So if you if you're wondering about the drinking straw thing, just um, just watch out for an update, and you'll see how I see what I do with the uh, drinking straws to prevent um, bugs shearing them off. And I've got this uh, aquils broccoli. I've done 35 of them. Gives me the option whether to do like 24, 28 or 32, which is what I can kind of fit me better to squeeze. Um, so everything's a bit more tidy and it's still not a lot of room, but at least I can sort of access things now. And I've got my compost, the Mickey Light bag ready there with fleeces in. I've got the, that's all the seed mix out of pricking out. Just put it there, let it dry off. If anything sprouts, I can pick it out because I'll reuse it. I'm not bothered about that. Um, Obviously in here I've got the, the better Santero that have all germinated. Uh, I've got some leftover Rigoletto on the right and then I've got the Golden Acre, the Primo 2, which are um, sort of like the second sowing of them. So they're coming through now, so probably another, another five days I'll probably prick them out. And obviously the spring onions, I'll let them get about four inches high I think and then I'll plant them out when they get chunky enough and they're easy enough to pull out. Because sometimes with these module trays, you try and get stuff out and it all crumbles. Um, at the back here, careful, let's just lift this tray off. The lid. At the back there, you can see I've got um, labels are facing the wrong way, but I think it's Mazur and New Red Fire. I've got um, 20 of each. And that, these lids aren't perfect with fitting. Right, I'll sort that out in a minute. I'll do it one handed. I'm going to uh, shut the lids on these. Um, and then open them tomorrow daytime and uh, it might get cold tonight so I'll probably just lay a, a fleece over it or a bubble wrap um, and that one I've got some little gems I'm a bit short little gems um, I've only got uh, what 16 in there and I've got uh, a Grenoble Red I've managed to get 
20 some are really tiny but i have sewn like a, a single tray with a mixing um just some short lines for backups um so i can prick some more out if i need to As i say these are only about uh, 10 days old something like that since i sold them so the other ones they'll, they'll catch up you know there won't be that much difference in them once they're uh, ready because these will sulk for a little you know for a few days up to a week until they start putting some new roots out and then they'll uh, they'll realize they've got room to grow but it's just having the temperature right not too hot not too cold just to get a steady growth so i'll close this lid because i want it to humidify in here a bit more because these onions can dry out quite easy because they're only them small module things so let it humidify a bit in there and uh, moisten it all up after i've still got to do these uh, strawberries tidy them up so i'll probably do uh do that tomorrow nip out for half hour and just tidy them up so that's it for uh, this video i've got a fair bit done so i'm happy with that so i'm gonna head in now have a cup of tea and probably get my head down a bit because i've overdone it a bit today but uh never mind at least it's a big big weight off my mind and then uh, i can sort of uh, relax and if it rains then it's not such a big issue but i'd rather it didn't <laughs> so thanks for watching take care and uh, if you want to help support the channel links in the description for how you can help support the channel so take care and i'll see you next time Bye bye